Hello and welcome back to your machine learning A to Z course. Are you super excited? Because I am super excited about this tutorial. We're talking about nonlinear support vector regression. This is going to be quite an advanced tutorial, but don't worry, we will break it down. And as per our mission, we'll make the complex simple. So uh, before we start, just wanted to make sure we're on the same page. So this is one of the most advanced tutorials in the support vector series of uh, tutorials. Please make sure that you've completed all the previous tutorials uh, on SVR and SVM and kernels before proceeding with this tutorial because you'll need all that knowledge to be able to tackle this one. All right, and off we go. Here it is. So imagine you have a data set like this. Um, and you're trying to fit a support support vector regression onto this uh, plot. You want to see what kind of um, uh, trend line is there, or what kind of uh, equation is behind this. How do you model this? What, what kind of model can we fit to this, a support vector regression model, so that you can predict what the next value is going to be for uh, a new point that is added to the plot. So if you know X, what is going to be Y? Well, you might want to try and fit a linear support vector regression and it'll look something like this. You'll have these support vectors, but as you can see, like intuitively, you can tell it doesn't fit, right? Like you can tell that something is going on here beyond linear and like while this it might model may be okay there somewhere at some point, clearly if you get a point with X over here, you're going to get the incorrect value. Or if X is over here, you're going to get an incorrect value which does, doesn't fit. Looks like something else is going on. You might try something like that. Then that won't fit as well. That doesn't fit. So it doesn't look like a linear model fits here. And it looks like something more complex is going on. So how do we build a support vector regression that will fit um, our data here? Well, this is where nonlinear SVR comes in. It's going to be uh, quite interesting because we need to go to a new dimension. And that's what that's why we're going to add this box. It's just for visualization purposes. Like our data hasn't changed, our axes are the same. But just for us, once we're transitioning to a third dimension, uh, to keep track of things, we're going to add this box and we're going to add these diagonals as well as a point, a red a circle in the middle, just so visually we can see what's going on. Uh, it'll help us. It's just like a visual aid. It has nothing to do with uh, the algorithm itself. It's for illustrative purposes. So now we're going to actually take this and uh, <laughs> look at it from a different perspective of, at an angle. So at an angle, it looks like this. Um, and that will allow us to build that dimension Z. Now let's get rid of the uh, previous uh, view. And we're going to make a copy of it because there's going to be quite a lot of things going on. And in order to keep track of everything, we'll have two charts that are developing in parallel. So now on the right, what we're going to do is just as we did previously with support, support vector machine, and that's why it's important to have seen those tutorials, uh, we're going to add um, a kernel. And in this case, we're going to add the um, or a new function to take us into a third dimension. We're going to add the radial basis function or the RBF. So here, there we go, that's what it looks like. That's with the RBF. You can see our data vaguely underneath, but here you can see it more clearly. And just to, as a reminder, the uh, formula for uh, the RBF function is over there. Now, if we project our data into uh, onto this RBF, you'll see how it works. So first of all, the center, zero, or this point, zero, 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 on x, the y-axis, um, projects straight into the very top. And if you, we discussed this before in the uh, tutorials, if you put zero, 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 L is the distance from the center, uh, you'll get um, the very top, you'll get a one. Now let's see how these other points, the other points on our visualization will be projected onto the view. So we're going to start with this point over here. So that point will be projected into this uh, point in the Z axis somewhere here. By the way, some of these things might not be absolutely 100% accurate uh, as I'm uh, drawing them here, but they deliver, hopefully they deliver the point home. Okay, so now this point will be projected to over here somewhere, next point uh, over there, and this point, this point, and then the following points will be almost at zero. So all this blue stuff over here, the bottom is very, very close to zero, so it'll be very close to zero. So as you can see, we've been keep, keeping track on, on the left, we've done all of these points over here. Now, the other points, the remaining points, the, these ones, they're actually, we can't see them. And not to, in order not to clutter things, anything in this 
quadrant in this triangle here. We're not going to plot it because it's on the back. It's on the opposite side of this radial basis function or, or, or this uh, view. And we're just not going to plot it, but just we can just imagine that they are also projecting onto this mountain on the other side. Now, what happens next? Well, next we need to, in uh, uh, these three dimensions, we need to um, create, run a linear model. So now we're in three dimensions. Now we can run a linear model and a linear model in three dimensions is not a line. So in two dimensions, it's a straight line. In, a three, dim in three dimensions, a linear model is a hyperplane. So now if we run a linear model, we'll see that it will, how does it fit our data? It would fit our data something like this. Um, and what do we want from here? So once we fit the hyperplane to our data in these three dimensions, what do we want from here? Uh, we want to see where does it actually cross, where does it intersect our RBF, our radial base function. So basically all the surface that we see here, including the floor, this whole surface, where does it intersect? Well, it intersects it over or across this yellow line. So that's the point of intersect or the line of intersect. Now, if we get rid of the plane, we're left with this line. And if we project it back down onto the two dimensions, the X and Y, look, watch what happens. So we're not gonna draw it on this plot, we're gonna draw it on this plot. So watch what happens. There we go, that's our two dimensional line. So, this, so that's our intersect line projected on the two-dimensional plot. And that effectively is our model. So if we now look at it in the perspective that we started with, you'll see that that is what it looks like. That's the uh, nonlinear SVR. Now, I know you probably have a few questions. Let's uh, try to dig into some of the um, comments or some of the concepts behind this. So first of all, here we have this two-dimensional plot. Here is our uh, three, dimension, three dimensions. So why is this SVR, right? So where are the support vectors? Well, in a three-dimensional three dimensional space, the SVR would run very similarly to how it runs in a two-dimensional space. Instead of having, but instead of having like a uh, epsilon insensitive tube, we would have an epsilon insensitive space between hyperplanes. So we we would add these two new hyperplanes. One would be epsilon above. One would be epsilon below. Remember how we had for linear SVR, we had just a tube. Uh, but now here we have this space in between them. And so basically what that means is any uh, points that are in between uh, these two, ex like the most outmost uh, hyperplanes, any points in between them, they won't be considered towards, um, like uh, the error for those points will not be considered. What we want to do is we want to minimize the error uh, from this epsilon insensitive space to the remaining points that are outside. And what this looks like over here is that's our bottom uh, hyperplane, that's its projection away, or that's the projection of uh, the part where it intersects with our uh, radial basis function, and that's the top uh, hyperplane, and that's its intersection, or the projection of its intersection. So this line over here is projected into that one. And... Uh, Basically, anything in between was uh, the epsilon insensitive space. Now it's become this epsilon sensitive tube. And these are the support vectors. The crucial point here is that this is the outcome. Originally, this is these hyperplanes are identified or built from this view, from the three-dimensional view. So that's where uh, these points come in place. So this point is actually underneath. We can't see it. It's over there. And there's also these two points that are on the left. So from here, they're built. And then this is just a projection just to put it into a perspective. So that's why it's still a support vector regression because we have these points. Now, um, hopefully that explains why it's a support vector re regression. There's just one last thing I wanted to mention. The final thing is that everything we've been talking about here is for illustrative purposes. In reality, the way this works is very similar to the how the support vector machine works how what we discussed about the kernel trick that in reality we don't have to go into a third dimension do all these projections and uh, then uh, find our hyperplanes find this epsilon sensitive space and then project everything back and get this it would be too computationally expensive so what we actually discussed here is a, a more complex approach this would be like the full fledged approach with going into a third dimension doing the hyperplanes coming back getting our end result. That would be uh, like the, the full Monty in a way. 
but effectively what happens or in reality is that we use the kernel trick so just like with the sport vector machine we don't have to go into a third dimension everything happens in the same space simply by how we use the kernel trick now we won't dive into more detail on that i'll let you um, think about that uh, in your own time on how the kernel trick would be used here I, because simply it's a it's a easier concept than what we discussed by looking at the example of the kernel trick in the svm uh, we can extrapolate how that would work or how that would benefit us here as well but in a nutshell this is what the non-linear support vector regression is all about and uh, the best part is of course the result that it allows us to model uh, non-linear relationships like this and get uh, insights from our data i hope you enjoyed this tutorial this was quite an advanced concept so congratulations on making it to the end and i look forward to seeing you on the future tutorials in the course and until then Happy analyzing.